All right, around here at the Suns, you know we like to get big guests. And no bigger guest, perhaps, than the big cat himself. Big Cat Bryant has been kind enough to spend some time with us tonight and talk about his UCF career. So uh, let's welcome Big Cat in. Big Cat, man, first off, I know you've been super busy, tied up with everything lately, man. I appreciate you getting back to us. Appreciate you coming on the show. Man, appreciate it, man. There's a dope opportunity. Like, like you said, I've been busy, so... And then you hit me up. I was like, I got to do it, man. Find time to get up here, man. Just, you know, let people know, you know, talking and update people on me and things I do and love, man. Yeah, no, let's 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 do that. Obviously, we want to spend a lot of time talking about your UCF career. Uh, and I want to start with this one, Bickett. Obviously, you went through the portal uh, after your career at Auburn. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, and take us through what happened next. There were obviously rumors of other schools. I'm sure other schools were looking at your services. Yeah. Uh, but then ultimately, you decided to come to Orlando. Take us through that journey from, right. you know, hey, I'm leaving Auburn. I'm going to take my grad transfer to how you end up at UCF. Man, originally, I remember, oh, this is exactly how it happened, man. Like, I remember sitting on the couch at Auburn, my house, you know, trying to figure out what I was going to do. Uh, I remember seeing, first thing I seen, remember seeing was uh, I got the head coaching job at UCF, and I was like, the first thing I told myself, was, I'm, I was like, I'm not going to UCF. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> so that was the first thing I told myself, uh, just, you know, go, going into the deal. And then, like, I was going to Tennessee. I was I was originally committed to Tennessee, one of my former high school coach, uh, more like my father, Coach Sheldon Felton, is the head football coach at Valdosta High School right now. He uh he was he was an outside linebacker coach there, and I was gonna go there. So I was like, you know, I'm finna go to I'm finna go to you know I'm about to go to Tennessee. Then a little McDonald bag situation happened with you know with uh, recruiting and all that. So that kind of like blew all that up. I kind of knew it was gonna happen, but I still did it just cause you know. But then I got some I got some um got some talk. Uh, I got like after that after that situation happened, that's when I was leaning towards Oklahoma. I had I, I actually had the like the post the the, the actual uh actual like uh edit you know of me mm -hmm. uh, committing or saying I was gonna commit to Oklahoma I had it and everything but ultimately it just didn't work out man um uh, some things happened um um and I mean I mean and I was going out there for a few months as Oklahoma I was like man uh, I mean I'm going to Oklahoma for a few months I, was, I don't know if I want to do that Norman Oklahoma like that's that's out in the middle of nowhere so. Um, so it's just kind of, I just kind of did my research and it, it, it initially it just, it just didn't work out. And then, um, Malzahn called me uh, a couple of days after I got a job, you know, me with me knowing, like, I feel like UCF at the time didn't have enough to really compete. I felt like, you know, so I told, cause I told him straight up, I'm like, coach, if I come down there, you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to, uh, bring some more guys in. And so he was like, okay, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. And um, Coach Mazan called me like a couple days after. Or this is, this is after. Uh, actually, this is uh, uh, Coach uh, T. Will called me after. After Mazan got the phone me with me uh, telling me about the plan and things like that. So I talked to T. Will. And then um, Mazan called me back a couple of days after. It was like, we're going to get this guy. I think it was Ricky. It was Bowser. And I don't know, I think maybe some more guys, but those are those are main two I know because those, those those two were my uh, roommates. So so um so yeah, so I was like, okay, cool. I was like, you know, if we can get these guys on board and the only thing I do is commit, man, I'm all for it, man. So I ended up doing it, man. Me going to Orlando, man, me going to UCF, man, probably one of the best decisions I ever made, just as a man, as a as a human being, because going from the SEC and being in all that pressure to going to like Orlando, UCF was it was just like a breath of fresh air. Like it was so, I don't know. I mean, you can just tell by the demeanor, of, you know, Mazon, the way he. I mean, I know I've been knowing Mazon for a long time, so just the way his energy and everything just changed, and that's just kind of like. I mean, I, I, I was the same way, man. Just going from you know small town Auburn, you know, you know, big football city, small town, you know, to going to the actual city, you know, in Orlando, we're having so many different things to do and access to this and that, man. It was a it was a real, it was a real big deal for me. Real big, uh, you know, cultural switch for me, man. Like it was, it was real good mentally for me, man. Just kind of, you know, just kind of seeing what the city was and actually living in the city because I mean, I, I'm from a whole small, small country town, and then going to Auburn. I mean, I thought, I mean, Auburn has a lot of people in it, but it's still small. Everybody know everybody. You know, small country, you know, town. You know, so that's how it was, and man. Me just going to Orlando probably one of the best decisions I made, man, and. And I don't regret it whatsoever. You know, we, you know, you know, you know how the season ended. Being Florida, man, and 
you know, things happened the way it did. Man, I had a blast just, you know, being a part of that, you know, the, the, the team and the organization, man. So it was, it was dope. Oh, so hold up. Why was UCF a no right away? Why did you say there's no way I'm going to UCF initially? I just, I don't know, up front, I was just like, I'm not going to UCF, man. Like, I just, because, I first of all, I didn't know, I didn't know what I know now about UCF. Like, I didn't, first of all, I didn't know it was, like, one of the biggest schools in the country. Like, I did not know that. Like, well, student body was, like, 71,000 or whatever it was. So, yeah. I, I didn't know that. And then... I don't know. I just kind of did my research on Orlando, man. And just, you know, as I did my research and I was like, man, like it wouldn't be too bad to go to Orlando. <laughs> like, so, and then, bro, like I got to say, it was probably one of the best things I ever did, man. But you were on that team in 17 in the Peach Bowl, right? When we played, I, you, guys. you didn't learn I, then how big we were? Yeah. Well, I'm going to be honest, bro. I don't play in like fourth iron ball. I didn't, bro. I didn't, bro. I didn't, I didn't know anything about UCF. I mean, after we okay, and and the reason why we lost, I'm gonna be honest, like we were just banged up, man. We were banged up bad, like so it wasn't like I feel like if we were a hundred percent that year, if we was a hundred percent that year, like I gotta say hundred percent, was just a little bit better percentage than what we were in. Like guys were banged up, I think, because that year in Auburn we played like it was a stretch. We played like LSU, played some food, some trash team, Bama or Georgia, Bama. It was just a long stretch of just physical team. I think we played Georgia twice in like two weeks, like or three weeks, something like that. It was like crazy. So it was just like we just had a, a it was McKeon Johnson was hurt really, really bad. So it was just a whole bunch. A lot of guys was just hurt. It was just, you know, it was just unfortunate for us. But it is what it is. But like I said, I think we just, I mean, I'm going to tell you what I did know, just watching Supreme play. Oh, my goodness. With my own eyes, bro. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Craziest thing ever, but I'm talking about sideline to sideline. Never seen an athlete like him, man. And it was crazy. I know you probably told this story a hundred times, but how did you get the name Big Cat? Obviously, that's not your name on your birth certificate, right? Uh, I don't got to change now. Yeah, I don't got to change now. Uh, but uh, yeah, I got to change like what about two years ago now? Yeah, hmm. a year, no, about a year, a year now. Yeah, so yeah, um, I was crazy, funny story, bro. So the guy I was just telling y'all about, um. Coach Sheldon Felton, he's the uh he he's basically who created me, man. You know, I was a I was a football player, I mean a basketball player before anything. I wasn't a, I, I didn't I didn't I didn't play football. So uh I remember one day this is this is the true story. I, 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 I get asked this so many times, but sometimes you want to tell a different story. <laughs> <laughs> this is the true story here, man. So I was uh he he was the he was he was um he, my coach, Coach Sheldon, I'm just telling you about. He had just got a job in my high school down in Chris County, down in South Georgia, and he was walking through the hallways, man, just trying to recruit, uh, just to see if guys wanted to play. I guess he seen me with a little size walking through the hallway, and he, you know, stopped me in the hallway. He was like, he's like, what's your name, man? You play football? I'm like, no, nah, no, sir. I told him my name. I was like, Mark Cavies. He was like, well, Mark Cavies, do you play football? I was like, <laughs> I was like no, sir, I don't. He said, you're going to give it a try. And the, and the crazy thing is, he knew my mom or knew of my mom, you know. And so my mom, you know, my mom's like, you need to go out there and play football for him. God, you know, we know each other. Like, we're at school with each other or whatever. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to give it a try. And so, like, I um I go out there to the spring. I go out there to the spring ball or whatever that was that, that, you know, when I was in high school. I was a junior at the time, too, also. So I go out there, and he's like, big cat. I mean, this is real, real. This is what he said. Big cat, bring your ass here. I'm so I'm looking around. I'm like, <laughs> at the time, I've told you, I'm not the biggest. I'm not the biggest, and I'm not the, I'm not the biggest on the team, and I'm a junior. So I thought he was talking about one of the older guys, like at the time, because like I'm, I'm like I wasn't that big. I was like maybe six, three, six, four, maybe like two hundred and what fifteen pounds. I was you know little little little, little skinny, you know skinny something. So I didn't think he was talking about me. He was like, big cat, bring your ass here. I'm like. So I'm looking around like a special. Like, like I was on the sideline. It was like a special teams period where you know defensive players on the sideline. So I'm looking around. I'm like, who is this crazy ass man talking to? Like, who's he talking? <laughs> to? You know, who's he? You know. So like, yeah, I'm, like, I'm thinking like he's talking to somebody else. He's like, no, I'm talking about your ass. I was like, oh, so I'm big cat. And prior, <laughs> I you not like prior that day, I had seen him. Like he never said my name to me or never. And just this one moment out on the field, he was like, big cat, come here. And and I, ever since then, but it just kind of stuck, man. And I, um, my first, my first college football game I ever went to was Clemson versus Florida State. A night game was the most dopest thing ever, bro. I ain't never been to a college game ever, and for that to be my first, bro, I go there, and he just tell, he just telling everybody, yeah, my his name's Big Cat, and it just stuck. And every when I got to Auburn, and you 
We're fine. He'll be back. I'm back. Once I went to Auburn, you know, once I went to Auburn and everything, and they ain't just stuck, man. So I got, so I, I'm realistically, bro, like, I'm from a small country town. Like, I'm from the, from Cordell. So I got about, like, honestly, I have about five, five, about four or five different nicknames. So, and Big <laughs> Cat was one of them. So, yeah, man. So it's kind of dope how I got the name, and it just stuck once I, uh, as 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 my as I uh transitioned from high school to college. And once I got to college, I didn't know what my name is Cat. So big cat. So I mean, that's it just stuck, man. So yeah. So when you get to Orlando, you're like the new guy. You obviously you're a transfer. What did you have to do to kind of introduce yourself to your teammates? I mean you obviously made a good impression. They named you captain and everything like before the season started. What was that whole transition yeah. like for you? Man, it was just it was just me being me, man. You know, um I already knew, you know, me coming from a big time program. Like I felt like, you know, I feel like the coaches had already did enough hyping it up and whatever the whatever the case maybe was, you know. Um, um, so uh I, I knew I knew you feel me, I knew, you know, the coaches had already did that. But as a as a as a player, as a leader, I, I told myself I was just like, uh, you know, I'm gonna go in here and, and act like I have never, you know never they only know me they don't know me and so like my first day there they had workout i wasn't even i wasn't even um i wasn't even um cleared to work out or do anything yet like i had just got there the i think i got there i got there i almost forgot, I almost forgot what day i got there but the next day i think they had workouts i went to workouts and i didn't even have to work out like i, I was just there you know i think it was 6 a.m you know i went out there and just watched some guys work out so that was like the first thing i did when i got there like i didn't even i i i didn't even have to be out there but i was out there so that was like the first thing i did like a 6 a.m workout and the only thing they do is running and i was just out there just showing just you know just being there you know so that was the, i feel like you know just being you know being who i am i was like you know i'm gonna just go out here and, and just show my face even though i'm not working out and that was the first thing i felt like i bought them guys like them guys like why is he here? He don't even have to be here. And I just felt like I just kind of continued to show those things. And 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 it just, you know, I just I just kind of like won on guys over, man. Just doing little things like that. Just me being myself, man. Like it wasn't nothing. Like I was a, obviously I was a captain at Auburn too. So I just kind of carried that same mentality from, you know, me being at Auburn to there because I mean I had a rough, I had a rough, you know, uh I had a rough uh, uh last year at Auburn because I had a high ankle sprain. So I was playing through it. What people really, really don't know is I played through a high ankle sprain injury on my left ankle all year. Like, so people want you know, people were telling me he can't play against, you know, with, you know, can't play against league competition. But the whole time, bro, I was hurt. I was playing on the high. I used to wear like a boot. It was like a cast, like a boot. I used to wear every game. So I used to have to, you know, just kind of play through that. And I just kind of showed grit, man. Like a lot of them games, I didn't, I didn't have to play. Like, I remember, I think we played Georgia, um, my senior year, that's my last year at Auburn, bro. It was a night game. I'm like, bro, I cannot just not participate in this game. Like, you know, so end up going out there, play the bad game. And, you know, it, it was it was you know, the rest is history. But like I just kind of just showed grit though, man. Just showing, just kind of taking the same things I, I did at Auburn over there, man. Because I, I knew, like I said, I knew I what I was I knew what I was getting myself into. Like, you know, as far as in like, you know, guys, okay, he gonna think he's the you know, his shit don't stink or he just, you know, he's this and that. But I was like, you know, since I'm, you know, I'm not going to do that. So I didn't even have to be at those workouts. I showed up, I showed up there just to show them guys, like, I'm, you know, I'm for real about this thing. I want to, you know, want to kind of help change this, you know, this program and help Malzahn, you know, you know, build this program. So that was the biggest thing for me. You mentioned this earlier, Big Cat. I'm curious, how was Coach Malzahn at UCF different than the Coach Malzahn you had at Auburn? It was way different. I mean, I, 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 I tell people this all the time, like, I remember the first time I even got to Auburn. Like he wasn't as he wasn't as open and as as player. I can't say player friendly, but he just wasn't who he was. Like as far as interacting with his players when I first got to Auburn. When I first got to Auburn, I rarely talked to Malzahn, rarely seen Malzahn. And as time changed, I guess he kind of just seen the way just the different classes and how different guys just you know react towards you know like with a coach being you know. At, talking to the head coach, I feel like you know talking to a head coach and seeing him around the building and actually having conversations with. Him, I, I actually think that's good for the team. You know, instead of being one of the guys that's always in the office and only comes down when it's time for team meeting and things like that. But I and Ma, I'm a kid you not. Malzahn wasn't like that, but he was he was kind of like he wasn't as open as he is now. Like when he got the UCF man, it was a whole different Malzahn. He got his hair, hair dyed and all type of stuff, man. I was like, coach, don't let his hair down down here, man. Like. So man, he was like I said, he's he just he just kind of opened up as a as a coach, man, and just you know really listen to his players and 
things of that nature, man. He just, you know, he just became more of a player's coach, man. I mean, that's and that's what he's always been. Once you had a chance to be on the field with these guys in practice and you saw the talent on both sides of the ball before the season started, what were your expectations for last year's team? How dangerous did you think that you all could be with uh, the talent that you had on, on both sides and on special teams? Well, I, I honestly thought we could have, uh, you know, went undefeated. You know, obviously Dylan got hurt, you know, Louisville, like with a third, second, third game of the season. So that kind of like slowed little things down. You know, but, you know, Mikey King, King came in there and did his thing. But just kind of looking around, man, I thought we was we was pretty solid. Definitely, you know, in the league, I thought we was, you know, pretty solid team. And obviously it's a first year staff. So, I, you know, it's, it's a lot of kinks to kind of work out, little different things and so I honestly thought we was going to be pretty good. You know, we did finish the season pretty strong, but, you know, it just so happened we had a lot of injuries, ups and downs. You know, I think Khalil, you know, uh, Khalil Davis got hurt, then Ricky got yeah. hurt. So it was just a yeah. whole bunch of injuries, man. So I was like, you know what? And I just kind of, you know, stayed, you know, try to, you know, keep them guys motivated you know, that were still there and just kind of continue to lead them because I know I know how them injuries can be. And they so just so unfortunate, man. But, like, on both sides of the ball, man, I just thought we had it, man. Randall, Keith. I mean, you know, we had got Bowser, and then I, and then RJ. You think about RJ. RJ tore his ACL at the beginning of the year, so it was just like a lot of stuff. I didn't even know RJ was like. I mean, I've seen RJ, but I didn't see RJ. Like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. it was like you know, this year, bro. I was like, whoa, we had him and Bowser. Then with you know, with John and just all the other tools we had, man. I was like, bro, we we're gonna be dangerous. But you know, things happened the way it did, man. You know, it is what it is. But like I said, I thought we was gonna be a pretty good team. Could have, like I said, with the injuries. It's so unfortunate, but I thought we was—I thought we was gonna be a solid team. Just you know, from when I got there, I thought we was gonna be a pretty good team. We got to be on that hour time show last year too. Did you think that was cool? Did you think it was a little bit of a distraction? The guys playing up for the cameras, anything like that? No, but oh, crazy story. I'm, 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 I'm gonna say this like it's crazy. But RIP, uh, the uh, I can't call his name right now, but uh, the one that hit the camera guy, the one that went over yeah. there to uh, Ukraine, yeah, man, RIP to him, man. Cause he, bro, I built a crazy, a good relationship with him, man, just over the time of the show, man. So it's kind of unfortunate what happened to him, man. That's so crazy, but man, no, I, don't, I really don't think it was, man. I just felt like it was another way people see my my personality, man, with the, the with the way the NIL was going, man. I just want to do some. You know, they, they they want somebody to do it. And I was like, shoot, I, why not me, man? I like to go fishing. And, you know, they used to ask me all types of different ideas. I wanted to do things like that. I'm like, yeah, I'm all for it, man. Like, shoot, I'm, hey, I'm with it. But I, I honestly just thought it was it was just another way for people to just see my personality. Because I used to have people all the time DM me, asking me, you know, just different questions about fishing. And did I want to have, did I have any fishing suggestions? Or did, did I want to go fishing with certain people? So it was just, so it was just, it was all overall just a great thing, man. I just... I just really loved it because I wish we had something like that at Auburn, to be honest with you. But I man, it was a, it was a great it was a great show, and I had a, I had a blast doing it though, man. All right, so the season starts first game, Boise State. We have like a four hour rain delay before the game started. Have you ever experienced anything like that? What are you doing during that time? Oh, bro, I think, bro, I, I kind of knew it was gonna happen, man. Because like I think we had a rain, we didn't have a rain delay the next week. I think we get Bethune, but like. I was just chilling, man, just kind of, you know, just waiting on them. I knew we was going to play, but I was like, oh, it was taking so long, man. But, you know, we finally got through it, and, you know, I was just I was just trying to stay loose in the locker room, man. That was that was the biggest thing for me, man. But, yeah, that was a crazy game, though. <laughs> that was a crazy game. Have you ever had a game end that late? I think it was like what, 2 a.m. in the morning when <laughs> that thing ended. Yeah, it was like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. I definitely haven't, bro. I've never, I've never been a part of a game that late, man. And, you know, I'm glad we got a dub, though. Like, you know, actually, I'm going to tell you one thing about that game. Like, I remember, like, the, I don't know if y'all remember, like, I grabbed, like, the fullback one time, but tight end when he was coming back across, like, it was like yes. one when yeah. Devin Hedges caught the interception. Remember, I kid you not, they had ran that play, like, early in that game. And I was like, I seen the four. I mean, because this is, I'm going to be honest, but when you watch film, man, and you just know what's going to what's gonna happen. Like, you, when you come on, it's just football, you know. And – I remember seeing, I remember seeing the formation. The guys, I know they're finna come back with this tight end again because they had, they were trying to get to the flat. It was fourth and short, so they, oh, fourth and whatever it was, it was short. It was that much though. They was trying to get the first down, and we was like gonna cover three. So I knew in my head, I'm like, I know we don't have the flats cover right now. So I'm like, I'm like, I know if he come across my face, I'm gonna just grab the tight end. They can't call a flat because it's either they gonna, I'm, I'm gonna act like he trying to block me. Like I don't, I don't, you know, you don't know the difference between him trying to block me and him trying to go out for a rock. So I end up grabbing him. 
And, and, in, and in the scouting report, the quarterback wasn't a scrambler, so I didn't expect him to run. I thought, I thought, I you know, it was it was the last, but you know, for them, so he ended up running. Bachmeyer, he ended up running, uh, he ended up pushing him out. He ended up throwing the ball to Devin Hester, man. Oh, yeah, Hester, and that was that was I don't know, that was that was history, man. But like, that was a dope game. I remember looking up at twenty one zero. I was like, whoa. Mm. <laughs> I was like, I ain't never been bad. Like, I ain't never been down this bad. But them boys kept their poise. You know, everybody kept their poise. Man, I kept motivating guys. We kept making plays. And I knew who was going to win, though. I knew I knew defense going to, you know, get the jitters out of the way. And we, we was going to catch on and catch fire. And we did. And, 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 and it, ended the way, it ended the game the way we did, man. It was, it, was, it was a really good game, though, man. Well, next week we had an easy win versus Bethune. And then you go to Louisville, right? The, the game you already mentioned. And, Big Cat, we've talked to a couple of your teammates, you know, since that game. And a few of them told us there was like a weird vibe just heading into the stadium that night. It was a Friday night game, obviously road game. Did you sense any weird vibe? Did you sense anything kind of off that, that night as you guys prepared to play Louisville? I didn't. I mean, it was a regular football game for me, man. Like, I, I was just – to me it wasn't. I was just – I mean, it was cold. I ain't gonna lie. It was pretty cold <laughs> in Louisville. Other than that, man, it was a, it was a, it was a game, cool, calm, and collected, man. That's how I just attacked the game, man. And I mean, everything. I mean, I hate we lost, but and the you know, way things happened, but man, I didn't. I just got at the ball, man. I knew I, I knew one thing. They ran the ball for me all game that, that game. Like I asked, I asked yeah. Malik um, during the game. I'm like, bro, why y'all keep running the ball away from me? He's like, bro, come on now. Like you know why we ran the ball away from you? Like so it was like because it got so it got to the point where it got to the point where. I was telling T. Will, I'm like, T. Will, I'm like, they've run the ball away from me. Like, you know, I didn't have no stats. You know how you know how people are. If you don't watch the game, you don't know what's going on. So people, you know, after the after the game, people are like, you didn't do nothing this game, this, you know, this and that and four. I'm like, bro, they ran the ball from me all game. Like, I'm I'm defensive end. So you you can either you can run away from a defensive end. Defensive tackle is a little different, you know. It's a little different because you're in the interior, but defensive end, you can run you can run away from a defensive end all game. And that was the case with them, man. And I was telling T. Will I remember telling T. Will during the game, I'm like, coach, like I can I can tell where the strength start. Let me just go to the strength. He was like, okay, cool. And we did that. And they were they were audible every time and run away. Every time. It was crazy, man. But I made a few plays that game, man. But it should be able to like things like that, man. I was, that, how how teams can just single me out like that and you know, and how they how they just impact the way, you know, I look like on paper. You know, I I mean it was my senior year, so it was all about numbers for me, you know. So regardless of the situation, like it's all about numbers. Yeah, they ran at poor Maltavo the entire game on the other side of that line, unfortunately. But other reason too, because we had we had we had yeah, he was a defensive tackle. He was a defensive tackle, yeah, yeah, yeah. I about that, so that was another reason why they kept running away from me too. Well, you, he was playing DN, obviously, because there was a ton of injuries that game. I mean, you you name it from the quarterback to the running back to the number of receiver. Ricky Barber went out. Have you ever seen yeah. a game with that many injuries take place? No, no, and that's why I was just like, whoa, like, and then with Dylan getting hurt for the last play of the game, I was like, oh, my goodness, I was like, the very last play of the game, I was like, whoa, like, but I've never been a part of a game uh, like that, man, that many uh, stars go down, and that's what, that's what they trickle for us, man, all the injuries, but it's part of the game, man, so, you, just, you know, we just kept going, I tried, kept trying to lead those guys. I know some people have said that the turf at Louisville was was rough, wasn't wasn't easy to play on. Did you have a preference playing on turf or, or grass? Did, did it did it matter to you what you played on? I prefer grass all day. First of all, them turf burns are nothing to play with. First of all, <laughs> hey, not love them like them turf burns, man. That, those you know, I actually got one that game actually. So and it, it is too like when when you tackle, man, when you going to go tackle a guy, bro. You if you if you already know, if you know what it feels like to have a turf burn, man, like it's. When you tackle, when you go to go tackle somebody, you're always thinking about it, like, oh, I don't want to hit the ground too hard. I'm gonna scrape myself for. It. So it's always that thought in the back of your head. But I'm a I'm a grass guy all day because I mean, obviously at Auburn, that's all we played on. So once and well, any, or anywhere in the SEC except for probably like Arkansas, I think maybe like my freshman year. Yeah, I think like Arkansas was the only only team that had turf at first. Turf, no, them Missouri, Missouri had turf. There's a few teams. There's a few teams in the SEC that you know we played against that that had turf, but most of the teams had grass. So I wasn't. I'm not. I didn't like that turf at all. <laughs> What's the mindset of the team after a loss like that, losing in the final minutes, and then all the injuries, knowing you're going to have to go on with a backup freshman quarterback now? Bro, I ain't gonna lie. Ooh, I, it was tough. It was tough. It was. It was really tough. Like I was. 
I didn't think because at first I didn't think Dylan's injury was that bad. I was like, no way, he got on the last play, last play of the game like that. And the crazy <laughs> thing is, I remember like, I could you not, man? I remember I was on the sideline. We had just drop head got in, um, and, and and got the turnover. Yeah, yep. And, and bro, I was so like, cause he was like his first play in the game. I was like, whoa, like he got in, the, you know, his first play in the game, man. He got in, and I kid you not, I told, I, I ain't tell nobody this, but I'm, I'm talking to myself. I said he finna throw an interception right here. I was, but my thing, I'm like, why the freak? Why we? Why we did not run the ball? We had three timeouts, and they was like in like couple two. They was like two high stages. I'm like, bro, run the ball. And I kid you not, soon as he, soon as the ball left Dylan's hand, I said he finna throw an interception. It bounced off Mari hands, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> and it went the other way. I said, I just said, it. I ain't want to say it to nobody, but I said it to myself. I and mean, that, and that's exactly what happened, man. That's exactly what happened. But uh, it was tough, though, man. It was, it was, it was so tough. I don't know. It was, it was tough moving forward after that game, man. I just, I was like, I knew for a fact we had that one. I was like, no, I know we finna win this one to get on the road now. Like, but you know, it happened the way it did, man. You know, hey. Yeah, you mentioned we thought we could go undefeated going into the season, but the next week we go to Navy. And we play against that triple option. Oh, how, much, on, the, how much do you hate that? Navy was the next week. Yeah, yeah. the very next week. Yeah. Or it might have been a bye. I think it was a bye, and I, then there was a Navy game. Oh, hey, Navy. Did we play Navy out of, out of Louisville? Yeah. I just know that Navy game. Oh, my goodness. Like, that triple option was something else. Like, I don't know if I can go back and watch film, bro. I was running sideline and sideline. Like, oh, my goodness. Like, they were they were doing some little thing or look, the option where they they were only getting yards on one play where they, where they were uh, always running like a pitch to the field. And I remember Bryce Armstrong was behind me. And, you know, when it comes to triple option, I played it before. I played it in high school. You got to be real disciplined on the defense side of the ball. You have to be. Everybody got to have a certain job. So I remember, like, they kept trying to run the pitch, like, the little triple option pitch to the field because they had the more field that way. And I was telling, you know, isn't this is, and I had got frustrated towards the end of the game. I ended up jumping off sides, costing nothing. We'd lose the game because I, I was just so frustrated because, like, I was telling Bryce, I mean, I hope he don't get mad at me, but I was telling Bryce after the, uh, during the game, I'm like, bro, listen, here, if I take the quarterback, you take the pitch. We can't have both. Like, we can't, like, if you do, if I do one job, you have to do, because he's the linebacker. So, I knew, I knew, I just knew my job because, I mean, it's, it's ball. I, I mean, it's, I just, I did my, I did my, I did my, I watched film. So, it's either, either or. Either you, you take the, you, either, either, either I take the quarterback or he take the running back or the pitch. And sometimes he'll take the quarterback and I'll take the quarterback and, and the pitch be wide open. So, it was just, it was just so much back and forth. And I don't want no last drives of the game, man. When they was driving, I'm talking about like hitting like three or four here, three or four here, three or four here, just hitting it. Like I had got so frustrated because I was I'm like, bro, like either you got this or that. Like either one. And the next play, he did exactly what I did not tell him. To want. Did not I just told him not to do. And they broke for like 15. And as soon as they got down to the red zone, bro, like I was just so frustrated. As soon as they said hit, I was off the ball because I was like, bro, I gotta stop. I gotta, we have to stop these boys right now. Like, you know, so it was just like it was just so much, you know. Just frustration at that, at that time of point, man. I, so I ain't gonna lie. If, we, if I didn't jump offside, we probably would have stopped them. Cause I think if we gave him a new set of downs. It was already, you know, it was already bagged up, and I jumped off sides, man. I ain't gonna lie. After that, I was like, whoa, like kind of like my emotions get get the best of me, and I got frustrated. And I told my coach that I'm like, man, listen, here, man. Somebody wasn't doing their job, and I was just trying to, I was trying to tell him, like, just kind of get on the same page because. This is a, this is a team game. In, in order for you to be a triple option, you have to know your assignment, do your assignment each and every play. That's one thing that it does. Like you can't get tired of doing your job in a triple option. Like you can't. That's just part of it. And I guess he got tired of doing his job, and it just went the wrong way. And I got frustrated towards the end, and it happened the way it did, man. It was, I was so I was so mad. Oh my goodness! I said Navy, <laughs> like Navy. So I was that so some, mad. That's something that he, you're telling me. The linebacker has to read what you're doing. You're not. Predetermining, hey, I'm going after the quarterback on this play, or is there a signal? Well, at, at the beginning of, of the game, that's what it was. Up, that, that's what it was. Like he was had a certain job, I had a certain job. But I guess, like I say, I don't know. Like either he just got tired. Like I say, with a triple option, bro, it's made to the point for you to wait. Is they're waiting on that one, that one little, you know, that play for you to mess up, and. And it got to the point where either he wasn't doing his job, uh, and I was like, bro, like, cause like it was just, 
the two, three yards, the three, four yards games were killing me. Like, I, you know, that's a win for them, you know, in, in that offense. So that was the biggest thing, man. It just we had a specific game plan, but he, I guess, it just went left. Like, and I, and I was just trying to tell him, okay, if you gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just do the opposite of what you do, and it just didn't work out. <laughs> it just didn't work out. So I was like, it was bad. Vic, one of the things that happened in that game that drove fans crazy is Mikey Keene would be in a bit of a role on offense, like throwing the ball really well. And then like second down, Gus would try to enjoy Gatewood for some sort of a trick play, kind of break the rhythm up. And then, you know, we ended up having a punt on third down as, as a player. Was that frustrating to you guys, too, on the field where, uh, when you when you have your momentum sort of broken up like that? Well, I'm going to tell you this. Like, I, I was like. Every time you put Joey Gatewood on the foot on the field, you know what they're finna do. Like you know, you know they're finna run Joey Gatewood. Like, I was like, coach, like, come on. And like, it, it, I mean, I love Joey, but like they they never put they they were specifically had this package where he ran the ball. He did not know he never threw it. So I was just like, bro, once he got in the, got in the games, any short yardage or whatever the case may be, they know he's about to run the ball. Like, and it was just I was just like, man, like. It's like taking candy from a baby. Like this is too easy, coach. Like, and but yeah, that that was a big trust me. Which all felt is what we felt because I was I was living, I was living. <laughs> well, next week we went home. We got a nice win against ECU, and then we uh, we head to Cincinnati. Obviously, that was a tough game. They were a great team in twenty twenty one going to the Paul, college football playoff. I tell y'all something about Cincinnati. That nobody knows. Oh, great. Okay. The, the head says was not working for the coaches that game. Like the headsets, like you know how the coaches communicate when it's time when it's time to do like uh you know uh just anything communicating wise. Like you know when the guys up in the box and then you got the guys on the field, the headphones wasn't working when we got there. So it was times where there had been certain formations or certain you know packages or certain uh, personnel, and we couldn't get we at the beginning again we couldn't get personnel changes because obviously you can't see everything from the field. So that's why you got coaches up top, and so that mm-hmm. people don't know. Like you mean. Know, I don't think nobody know that we the, the coach's headphones wasn't working that game, so we had like zero communication on the sideline, zero. And so that game, that game started bad from the jump. I was like, bro, they, they, they come on! I've never out of all my games of playing college football, I was like, I've never, I've never been in this situation where the headsets are not working for the coaches. Like that's a big deal if you don't know. But that's a big deal because obviously the personnel changes and you can see they can they can see certain certain things from the ball that you can't see from the field and that was like well, that was one thing that people don't know about that game so we was already beat before the game started like <laughs> really isn't there a rule that if, really? if your side's not working the other isn't there a rule if your side's not working the well, other side can't use their headset well i, I that's i don't it, so you see it happens so i don't i don't know it happened right like literally, it happened. The, when the coaches realized who's already like, we were finna get ready and play. Like we on the field, like we on warmed up, we on the sideline, like finna get ready and play. And then that's when the coach is like, the headset is not working. And after that, bro, I by far that was one of my worst games in my career. By far, like I was, it, it, it was like I said, we were beat before we got the bus. So you just with the just with the headset situation, bro. I was like, I've never been part of a game where the headsets for coaches are not working. Like I said, I don't, I think theirs were working, if I'm not mistaken, mm. but I don't, I don't. Uh, you, that might that might be a rule, but I'm not sure. But who was already behind the eight ball before before the game started? Uh, Mazan always talks about a 24 hour rule, like just digesting a loss and kind of moving on. Was, was that one tougher for y'all to take? Um, you know, it, was that something where in the locker room it was sort of hurt more? It was because, like I said, if the game was just played fair, or the, or the oh, I ain't gonna say played fair. No, I'm being those now played fair. I'm gonna say that. Forget that. If the game was played fair, bro, okay, we we'll live with it. But like, bro, we was already like headsets are not working, bro. I'm like, come on now, like, come on, like, nah. And then they beat us the way we they beat us the way they did. I'm just like, bro, the game would have been a lot closer if we just had simple the headsets working for the coaches, bro. And like I said, I don't think nobody ever, you know, outside, you know, outside of the program, I don't think nobody else knew that. That's why the game got so bad so fast. All right, well, after that game, we go on a little bit of a run, right? We win the next three, Memphis, Temple, Tulane. You had a pretty big game against Memphis. You get a couple sacks. What, what do you remember about that one? Oh, man, I just, man, it, it was it was, <clears throat> it was, was one of those games, man, when I just remember talking to my mom because I think the first couple games of the season, bro, I would beat myself up by not getting sacks, bro. So, that was, you know, like I said, it was all about numbers for me. And so – I just I was beating myself up so bad just about not getting sacks. My mom just came to me and she was just like, 
just go out there and have fun. Just don't even think about sex. And then I and literally when I went out there, I think I'm see we played Louisville Navy. So I, yeah, that Memphis game, I was one of. I think I had, like, I had multiple sacks that game. So it was just like I just went out there and played, man. You know, and that was the biggest thing with me, man. I was all in my head about you know you know just get set, get set, get a set, get a set. And when I just played and let everything and just let everything go, man, them sacks the, the sacks came. They came and they came in bundles, you know, and they always do. It's not, it hasn't just, was just you. The last two years, the T Will defense, is there something about the scheme that we run? Is it something about the defense itself? Why we're not getting as many sacks as maybe we think we should? Um, don't get me wrong. I missed, I, don't get me wrong. I missed a few now. Like, I, Cause I remember, like, I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back. Like, I remember, like, I watched this film on, um, it's not too long ago on the Bethune. We played Bethune Cook, man, I think. Mm-hmm. I think. And, what we had to run a corner blitz, and the corner came off the edge, and I knew I had I had beat the tackle. I was on the end. I beat the tackle inside, and the corner was coming off the edge. No, no, no. It was it was no it was, it was no it was it was uh no it was it was the first game of the season actually. It was it was it was uh Boise, and we had a corner come off the edge. Like I could have had my first sack, but I was just so like lack of days ago. Like I was just like I knew for I don't know for in my head I knew for a fact like. I knew that corner was gonna make that sack, like type of deal. Like it was like one of those type of. Deal. I knew this. I knew this, but he didn't. He didn't get it. And once he missed it, I reached out to grab him. Only thing the quarterback did was step up and make and deliver the pass. So it was just. I don't. I mean, I want to say scheme because like, I don't know. But if you go back and watch a lot of my games, bro, I got a lot of hurries. A lot of hurries. Like, um, I got a lot. Of, so it was like I, I caused like what, but maybe like three or four interceptions, maybe. I don't know, probably probably about two or three, two or three interceptions last year. Like I got Cam 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 good. He got one one game when I had got a uh, pressure. Um, uh, obviously Hester. So it was just like it was just like different things. But like, I like you go back and look. I had a lot of pressures. Like I was I was I was I was pressuring the quarterback a lot. So I was getting you know, so you know obviously that 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 affects the the, the you know the quarterback a little bit. So. I mean, sometimes I just didn't get there because, like, a lot of times, too, but I look at this. You you said it, too, like, uh, the scheme. We play a lot of cover three. So, in cover three, what's, 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 what's usually open? The flats. So, a lot of guys, a lot of teams were were getting getting the ball to the flats and, that, and those little quick routes and things like that. And, that, and, that's, and that's, that's basically what it was. And the thing is, like, from Auburn to the SEC to here, bro, we play – I mean the scheme because he get the scheme. He the defense from Kevin Steele, and Kevin Steele ran the same defense at Auburn. But the thing is at Auburn, we ran a lot of man with the corners. So the corners had so it was it wasn't like cover three. The corners had man 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 coverage 90 percent of the time when I was at Auburn. We get here we played more zone, but not a lot of cover three. So a lot a lot of the things like you say scheme why a lot of the a lot of the things that you if you actually go back and watch film you be you be like yeah he's right like a lot of the, a lot of the, Passes be quick. A lot of the flat routes, a lot of the, a lot of things that beat cover three. So that 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 definitely did play a role. Just probably scheme a little bit, you know. Did you did you watch a lot of games from this year? Can you hear me? You say, I'm sorry, you said what? Can, did you watch a lot of the games this year and, yeah, I, and notice I, the defense? I, I, the same thing. Like, did we get figured out? Kind of the way we were playing. The teams like well, the second I, half of the year got a lot worse. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't, I watched most games, but I didn't, you know, obviously with, you know, when that one, the Dolphins was traveling a lot. So I used to pitch like bits and pieces of games. But I'm going to be honest, though. I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not calling myself the best, but I was telling my homie, I'm like, bro, it's a team game. I'm like, bro, you ain't got me out there no more. So you you ain't got like me getting the pressures or me doing the things that I did. Like, I'm going to be honest, like, I'm going to be honest, like, you look at D. Brown. Like, look at some of our DBs last year. A lot of DBs was, like, some supposed to be some of the top in the country. But when you go back and look, like, I mean, a lot of the throws that, that the quarterback were throwing was, you know, one-on-one balls. The only thing you got to do is put your hand up and, you know, just, you know, knock the ball down, PBUs. Because, like, when it, comes to, when, it comes to, when it comes to football, it's obviously it's a team game. If the, if the D-line's getting pressured, that makes the job way easier for the DBs. Like when I was at Auburn, that's why we produced so many good like DBs, like Carson Davis's, the the Jamel Deans, the Noah Igbenogany. That's why those guys went so high and the, got picked and were, were so good because you got to think about it. Up front, we got a lot of pressure, so a lot of them PBUs were, you know, a lot of them PBUs they got were really gimmies because I mean the quarterback throwing up one on one, they just got a good athlete to make a play. So it's just like like I said, that when it comes to the, when it comes to you know football and D line and defense, 
when your D-line's getting, getting pressure on that quarterback, it, it helps out tremendously for the DBs. And that's how it was at Auburn. You go back and look at some of the DBs I just, I just named. They're still playing in the NFL right now. We close out that season, uh, because obviously with the war on I-4 game, playing against uh, our, our rivals, the South Florida team. Um, did, did anyone explain to you that rivalry? Did you understand about how big that rivalry was for, for UCF till you got here? And, and what were your thoughts when you got a chance to play in your first war on I-4 game? I did not know the war. I mean, because obviously I, I played in, you know, the Iron sure. Bowl. And I didn't, I didn't know that big. You know, I did really didn't. I didn't know, I didn't know much about it, to be honest with you. Uh, but, you know, just I think that week, though, that week of the game, though, I think a lot of guys just kind of, you know, coaches, you know, they, 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 uh, Coach Malzahn used to have uh, uh, former players come to the front and just explain how the game with the game men and things like that. So I didn't think once I got, you know, once the game got there, man, it's definitely I felt the intensity and just actually probably a couple of days prior to the game, man. It was just – it was intense, man. I, I, think it was, I, I think it was a great rivalry. You know, we won, but, you know, it was a great rivalry. <laughs> Well, we we cap that off with a, a Gasper Bowl against the Gators. All right, so can you set a myth straight for us here? The Gators fans would tell us that they weren't motivated. The guys were opting out. They had new coaches. They weren't ready to play. They had their third and fourth stringers in there. Did you feel any of that when you were on the field kicking the Gators' ass? No. <laughs> no, those guys were out there to play, man. Listen, I don't want to hear none of that. Because, um, like, Brayton Cox was like one of my one of my homies that's you know he played D line uh, over there number one at the time, so he was just telling. I mean, I kind of had the inside scoop anyway. He was just telling me what it was and what it wasn't. And yeah, I can I can say guys, okay, you can say guys wasn't motivated maybe in some way. But once you got out there, it didn't seem like you know guys were actually trying to play. And I can't say for the for their defense. I don't, I can't I don't know you know. I can't say for their defense, but as an offense, I honestly thought they were trying. Like Malik Davis, the running back out there, I, he went to Dallas with me. Like, uh, after you know, once I got you know went went to went to Dallas, he told me after the game like they tried to play, but he's you know we just had a better game. And I'm, I'm gonna be honest, like, I don't care how you put it, we beat the SEC team. Like I don't care if you didn't come to play. Like that's a bad look for y'all. Like I don't care. Like 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 the same way uh, UCF came to beat Auburn. Like that wasn't a good look. <laughs> Regardless, like that was not a good look. Did you get a sense of how big that game was going into it from the fans and from the, the older players that have been around the program for four or five years? Yeah, it definitely was, man. First of all, it was just, you know, obviously, you know, see who – I feel like it was a game where you'd be like, who's the best in the state, to be honest. At the time, I think, what, Florida State wasn't really good. So it was like, so we going to – this right here going to see who's the best team in Florida. So that was that was the biggest thing I was trying to do. Just And, and, and like I say, it really helped, you know, Malzahn set the foundation of the program, man. That was the biggest thing for me. And capitalizing, getting that win, I thought that would be a good building block moving forward for the program. But, yeah. Yeah, so we finished the season 9-4. and four. I mean, all things considered, you lose your starting quarterback, you got to play with a freshman. You got a new coaching staff. You got a bunch of new transfers. We beat the Gators. You consider it a successful year, that, even though we didn't play for a conference championship or anything like that? It was, it was, like I say, it was, uh, it, I mean, we won. And we beat Florida as an SEC team. So I feel like we, if anybody, if, if you beat an SEC school in, in any point, you know, especially being in that conference, I feel like you, it's a pretty good season. I mean, I wish we could have won 10 games, beat Navy. But, uh, I mean, I feel like it was a pretty good season. I mean, I, I, we had, we obviously had a lot, lot, lot more, you know, you know, our expectations were a lot higher than that. But as a, as a program and, and moving forward, I thought, I thought that was a real good building block, you know, moving forward with the program, though. I really did. Because yeah, you like to stay active on social media. And for some reason, it seems like a lot of people like to attack you. It seems like a lot of people will come at you for some reason. How do you keep yourself restrained from not just going off on some of these people? Oh, like, I oh. see some I see some cheap shots every now and again at you. Oh, my goodness, bro. Like, bro, I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm, let me say this first and foremost. Like, bro, I mean, I'm a good guy. Like, it's no, it's no, I'm, 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 I'm an Auburn, I'm, I'm an Auburn alum. I'm bleed blue and orange, bro. So, the thing that I did that kind of got people riled up, they don't understand. Like, it was a, it was a, I don't know. I, it was really trolling. Like, you know, because I, I mean, I had already told the guys over there what, what I was going to do. But it was just so people can, you know, how you have to get people something to talk about, basically. You know? So, that's why, that's, you know, I went on, you know, I had um, um, media day. And I said what I said. But in the way though, I did. I, I meant it though, and I mean, I really didn't mean it. Mean it, but at the same time, though, it wasn't me. It wasn't. 
I didn't think it was going to blow up the way it did because God was talking about me and this and that. It was just, it's the whole nine, bro. It was all, but it's all love though, you know, but it was the truth. And people don't, I guess people get intimidated because they were Auburn and we were UCL. Oh yeah, we SEC, we could beat y'all. But they didn't, end, they, they didn't finish the season that well. So it was just like, you know, it was like, hey, well, who, who, had, who, had, who had the last laugh? Me or y'all? Me. And it was just, it's all love though. <laughs> Does it bother you at all when people come at you like that? Or do you have to, like, restrain yourself from, like, going off on people at times? I, bro, I really, really do, bro. Like, I really – I had – bro, it got to the point where I had to cut my – like, every time I post, I had to turn my comments off. Like, if you wasn't following me, you can't, you can't, you can't like, reply. Like, because, like, man, I want to say some stuff. I ain't going to get into that. But, like, bro, it's just – it's just – man, I just had to keep my – I just try to keep my composure because, like, it'd be like, bro, you're, like – and people say this, you wasn't this, you wasn't that. Like, bro, I gave people some of their best memories ever at Auburn. Like, I like, like, I don't know if y'all know. Like, when I was um, um, Iron Bowl one year, my homie um, Zacoby McClain took a hundred yard return back uh at an Iron Bowl one year um, like a twenty. 20 oh, the cat is awesome. He he was really excited about that. Well. We'll hang out here for a second, Mike, and uh, and see if uh, Big Cat hops back in. Well, what's what's one thing that you read now on social media? You see, you see some fans uh, talking about that just drives you crazy about football. I, I just don't. I don't like the fact that people just you know. I understand. Like I was telling y'all, like, like the biggest thing for me when people say I'm not good, like bro, like I understand. Okay, my last year at Auburn, bro, wasn't my best. It wasn't, but I was I was dealing with a, a high ankle sprain. Like I was. Like I mean. I mean, it's unfortunate, bro. I literally got hurt. I can tell you exactly what happened. I got hurt. We had Kentucky on a Saturday. I got hurt that Tuesday in practice. Got rolled up. So it was just like the biggest thing that just really irks me. People just, you know, what were irks me, bro, when people say I'm not, nah, I'm not like good. I'm not, I'm not just, you know, like I'm just like an average player. I'm like, bro, I gave people some of the best memories of, 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 of their, you know, times of watching football. So that just be the biggest thing with me, man. I'm just like, bro, come on, like. Come on, like go back and like, I'd be like I I be well I'm telling you I I I'd be so sometimes I'd be want to just go individually and just <laughs> and show people like clips and just show people like okay I didn't do this I show them show you this let me show you this like it just be so many things that I can go back and show like with film you know and that'd just be the biggest thing I mean, like don't 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 get don't disrespect me trying because like just because I said the truth like don't do that like I mean what I said was the truth like. I'm sorry. I mean, we were the better team and we finished with a better record. So it was just, it is what it is. Speaking of social media, Big Cat, I saw your tweet over the weekend. Um, sad news. Your former teammate, Jack Hascock, passed away. Uh, I saw you tweet your condolences. What are, you, what are your thoughts and memories of the season you had a chance to play with Jake? Man, Jake was a really good dude, man. Like, so he played tight end. So I used to, I used to get into it with him a lot. I think I had gotten a fight with Jake my first, uh, first couple practices uh, at UC, here at UCL. Uh, you know, so. Uh, man, he was a great dude, man. So yeah, for that, for that to happen, I didn't hear what really happened, you know. But uh, but no, for, I mean, some of my best memories probably that fight, bro. Because like we had gotten a fight about something um in practice, and we just I remember coming to him, um him him coming to me as a bro. Like, he was like, bro, we brothers, man. It was just a little we got heated uh, heat situation at the time, and we just kind of shook it off and just you know shrugged it off, man. We just kept going though, but but it was it was crazy, man. Just life is just short, bro. And life is precious, man. That's why you got love your loved ones while you're here. And let you know, enjoy life to the fullest while you're here. And just be a great human being, man. Because you just never know, man. You just never know. Big Cat, give us an update on what you're up to now. What's the career? How's the career going? Well, right now, bro, unfortunately, bro, I just recently just got cut for um, Miami like two weeks ago, man. They just cut me because a fullback got hurt. And um, the backup fullback got hurt. He was in concussion protocol, so they had to bring another fullback in. So right now, I'm just right now. You know, obviously, I was with Dallas. Um, had had a had a good you know good three 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 uh uh preseason uh preseason game. I got my first NFL sack there. Um, but you know, right now, man, so a USFL team just called me uh, not too long ago. I think the uh, Memphis Showboats. The season season starts in April, so I'm you know I'm gonna see what that's about. A couple of XFL teams don't hit me. So I'm just, you know, right now, man, just, you know, we really got to kind of taking care of things that uh, 
that I that I that I that I couldn't take care of just personal things like I couldn't take care of like I you know obviously when I was you know you know busy because that NFL you're busy you don't have time to do anything to be honest you know anything you know really you know personally you feel me so that was the biggest thing it was just right now just kind of taking it day by day man you know continue to pray to the Lord and you know thank from you know asking for another opportunity continue to you know guide me you know be with me each and every way every every step of the way man and um right now I, mean, I know I know I know opportunity to come back up. I just need an opportunity. I just need an opportunity to get on that field. So with Miami, I never got an opportunity. Never like so it was. I mean, every day I showed up to work. You know, you know, like it was my last. You know, work hard. I mean, that that was just something I always do, man. Just work. You know, do something. If you gonna do something, do it to your hundred percent, your best of your ability. So that was the biggest thing um, with me with that. So I, that's why I didn't have no regrets. So it didn't feel bad when they cut me because I did everything. I mean, I was there early, there late. You know, just doing all the little things that you, you know, that you, you just separate yourself, you know, try to separate yourself. And, and ultimately, like I said, at the end of the day, bro, I just need that opportunity, but it'll come back around, bro. I, I know it will, man. I, I know, I, I know it will. I just, I know, I know it will. My, my opportunity will come back around. I saw you were back on campus recently, right? I think it was for the Navy game, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what, what are your feelings on the, on the season we just had this year and how the team's going to go to the future? Well, I'm gonna be honest. I'm just gonna be honest. Like that Navy can't hurt me because you know, obviously, mm-hmm. we lost the Navy last week, uh, last year, bro. And, and the way we lost to them was, I was like, bro, these guys didn't have not one passing yard, <laughs> <laughs> one passing yard, and we lost. I was like, bro. But you know, moving forward, man, I just feel like you know, honestly, Malzahn stayed to stick and stick stick to being a you know head coach and let his coaches do his do their job. I feel like. UCF would be a lot, you know, a lot better place, man. You know, honestly, I'm just, I'm, I'm called spade to spade. Like, you know, you know, the coach let coaches do do their jobs and, and move forward, bro. I think, I think the program definitely gonna go in the right way because Coach Mazan's a great guy, great, great coach. I mean, I mean, I mean, so I, it's not like it's the the, the, the the program's gonna be bitter or anything like that because of him. I just feel like he should just let the coaches be, you know, coaches coach. You know, at the end of the day, ultimately. I think, and I think the program continue to grow. All right, Bill Kelly, you've been really generous with your time, so we're going to let you get out of here. But before we do that, we'd like to end every interview with some rapid fire questions. These could be about music, movies, sports, anything fun in between, man. Are you ready for these rapid fire questions? Man, let's go, man. All right, here's my first one for you. Uh, earlier, you told us that Big Cat was one of like three or four nicknames you have. What are the other nicknames that uh, that you have? Uh, so my my it's crazy. I was just telling somebody the other day. Uh, so I, I was I was fat growing up. So my first one was chunky, like it was chunky, like so people was calling me chunky. Then okay. as older, it was it was a chunk. It just I took a while off it off of it. And um, so then like I have like then like I have like like certain sides of the family that give me different nicknames. And I'm from the country, so like one of like one of my my aunties used to always call me man man. Like I was like I was like. <laughs> I was like, what kind of nickname is that? Like, but that was that's another. So it's, it's, it's big cat, it's cat, it's chunky, it's chunk, and it's uh, and it's and it's man man. So those those are all my those are all my nicknames growing up, man. Wow. <laughs> all right, who is the funniest guy on the UCF team last year? Drop, 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 <laughs> drop, drop, drop. Far would be funny, bro. Draw would do some of the funniest, just off the wall things ever. Like it, it was kind of like something like he'll just like it was. It was kind of crazy, but I'm gonna say, I'm gonna tell you, he'll moan like on oh, in the weirdest like just this moan, like moan in the weirdest situations. Like we might be Malzahn might be breaking it down, and he'll just moan. Like I be like, bro, like what are you? Doing? <laughs> then he'll ask Malzahn some of the weirdest questions, like. What question you asked Mazon? He's like Mazon, yeah, he, but he's big. He was big, funny. I mean, one time he's like Mazon, you know, are you having a good day? Like, you know, he's like Mazon, why you never talk to me? And Mazon didn't even look at him. <laughs> Mazon, he looking at him, talking to Mazon the whole time. He's like, why Mazon, why you don't talk to me like that? Like, you don't like me or something? Like, man, drop by far was one of the funniest guys. Like every day, bro, I used to look forward to drop saying something funny or doing something funny, bro. Like, bro, every time, like, drop was the bro. I used to look forward to going to practice when when when, when drop is out there because you know he he had suspended for a little while uh, you know last year, and then he came back and bro, he was just the highlight, bro. Like drop was always the highlight, bro. All right, speaking of Malzahn, it's a, it's Christmas, uh, big cat coming up here in a couple of weeks. If you had to get Coach Malzahn a gift for Christmas, what would you get him? 
<laughs> if I can get my Zona Christmas Christmas present, what would it be? Honestly, I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I said that. Oh, uh, mm, I, I feel like I feel like y'all know what I was gonna say, but uh, <laughs> um, let me see. Mm, a new playbook. <laughs> ah, there we go. We'll take it. New hey, playbook. Nice. Hey, man. I gotta, <coughs> we got to throw that thing away, baby. Hey, we got we to gotta, gotta discard that one. <laughs> <laughs> is it the trick plays you don't like? Or what is it you don't man, what are you talking about? You watch games just like I do. Like, <laughs> oh, bro, my grandma used to call me. was like, bro, Malzani's running the same plays he did at all. I was like, how you know? She's like, look at I'm looking at it. My grandma's 60 years old. I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, see, he can see. I know, I know, I know everybody else does. It's like, it's so, you know, but I love Coach Money. You know, I love Coach, though. <laughs> All right. How much are you benching and squatting right now? Um, So, I don't, I don't traditionally just max out no more. Like, just with one weight. So, you know, I just, I just, ten, I, I just mess around with like 225. But like, I think the last time I maxed out bench press was like, 385 385 I bench press I was like I was like one time and I squatted like five what 550 550 so it was that was that was that was it was a solid number but my thing is what well, people don't really realize I mean, some people say I remember some of my home that day, like, that's it like bro y'all gotta understand I'm six four like that's a long way when you you know when I'm squatting bro like then the way the way that strength conditioning coach over there at UCL bro he used to have me sit ass to grass like I was like bro like I ain't never I ain't never lift weights like this at all bro like real real like real stuff like I was like when I used to squat I'm like he's like lower I'm like lower like come on coach like come on man like then bro I'm telling my dead ass like ass to grass like I was like bro, doing that like. No, that's a long – you know, I'm in that hole, man. That's a long way, man. <laughs> that's a long way. You, you mentioned you obviously spent some time with the Cowboys. I'm a big Cowboys fan. I've uh, been a Cowboys fan all my life, so it was, it was bummed to see them uh, – to, to them let you move on. Um, but I do have a Cowboys question for you if you can answer this for me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Dak Prescott looks like he smells good. Am I right about that? <laughs> I've never – I mean, yeah, he does. I, don't I ain't never reached – you know, yeah, I ain't never reached – didn't smell a stench from him, but I know yeah, he looked. He looks like he just smells fantastic at all times. I don't know why I think that. Well, I don't know, but yeah, I, I, I can agree. But I, I never really. I don't know. I mean, that's cool. Like I never just. I don't know. I never just smelled him though. Like, okay, right. well, I'll ask somebody else next. Yeah. All right. What's your favorite Christmas song? Um, my favorite Christmas song. I think probably I'm gonna be honest. Probably one of the ones I used to sing back in the day, like when you know how you, you know how you used to do it in school, like Feliz Navidad, Prosper, yeah. Feliz Navidad. Yeah, we used to do that one back in school back in the day. You know how you just sit, you know how to do the, the Christmas program, you know. So yeah, I used to know that one. That's probably one of my favorites. I wanna wish you a merry <laughs> Christmas. Yeah, I won that. Yeah. Uh, Big Cat, you mentioned last year was obviously the first year of NIL. A lot of the guys in the team rolled out their own merch lines, right, with their own their own shirts, with their own products and stuff. Who had the best merch line last year on the team, and who had the worst merch line on the team last year? Oh, uh, I had the best. Okay, far none. Like I had the best. Like with the Big Cat shirt, I don't think I've seen my shirt. Like my shirts were nice. Um, but then I had like then I had like the Big Cat Kit Kat shirt, but I, I was the only one to have that because I, I didn't want Kit Kat to you know come knocking yeah. on. My door you really so but uh who had the worst? Uh because it was new, so a lot of guys didn't really a lot of guys didn't really play around with the merch until like this year. This year you see a lot more of the guys try to reach out. I was the first to do it. Cause a guy were you, ro were you rocking any DG the brand last year? I, I did, I did. I supported him. Mm -hmm. DG was nice though. So I was his his definitely wasn't the worst. His his was nice. Um Hmm. I ain't gonna say worse. I can't. I don't know because, like I say, it was, it was new last year, so you didn't have a lot of guys that were really like me and DG was like one of the, like really like only only two that really had done it, if I'm not mistaken. But like I said, I think guys kind of picked up on it towards the end. But I don't recall like many guys doing it last year. You know, like other than me, me and DG, because I did mine. Like I was like, I don't have but one couple months here, so hey, I'm gonna jump on it. And it was actually pretty good. A lot of guys, a lot of people used to buy my shirt, so. But words though I couldn't tell. Like I say, it wasn't 
it wasn't it wasn't that many guys that really done it did it last year. So I couldn't I couldn't tell you. All right, if I gave you a time machine, would you go back to the past or would you go somewhere in the future? Oh, I'm you know, I go back. <laughs> oh no, I, I'll probably go back. Yeah, I'll probably go back. Probably when I'll probably go. I mean, I don't know. I really don't have any. I don't even have any regrets, though. Like, you know, I look back at it. You know, like everything. I mean, I'm a firm believer in things happen for a reason. And um, but I'll probably go back though with some of the things that you know that have transpired in my career and my life. Though I probably, I definitely go back though for sure. Yeah. All right, what was your favorite food spot in Orlando? Tin and tacos. Mm, okay. Taco, well, tin, that's some really good tacos. Like I, that was my first time eating like those tacos. I was actually trying to work with them last year, you know, trying to get like a partnership. You know, I, you know, I, you know, obviously with NIL, like I was trying to promote them and things like that, trying to get on the, you know, maybe they can make a big ta- big cat taco. That's what I was trying to get, you know, get done. Yeah, but they they they, uh, they used to have what the specific one do i used to get i think it was i don't even remember the specific one but last time i was done i went to tenant tacos though so i don't know i forget what it was but tenant taco is definitely one of my favorite spots though down there all right well if you could have one superpower what would it be it'd be the teleport <laughs> it'd be to teleport anywhere like i was like just teleport like i'm there like yeah It'll be teleportation for sure. Yeah, you, you don't have to drive. You don't have to fly. You, you, uh, just, you just close. You just you snap your Show finger. Up. Stuff you got to do, shrivel or whatever you got to do. And you there. Show up. <laughs> All right. I'll get you out of here on this one, Big Cat. Um, who's the best team in the state of Florida? What, you mean like college too? In, in yeah. Pro? College. College right now? Uh... I, um, see, I got a couple. I got a homie that plays at Florida State. You know, obviously, see Tatum's over there. I'm not like, hmm. I, I, I mean, I, I want to say UCF this year, but I'm going to be maybe I, I'm going to maybe give Florida State this year, man. I think Florida State was a, a, you know, a pretty good team this year. You know, um, I mean, I, I mean, like I said, I feel like, you know, in order for me to really, you know, obviously – I feel like those teams have to play like UCF and Forest State have to play for you know the C, but I guess I'm I'm gonna just kind of dictate it off the uh, bowl game wins and whoever wins and how they win. I feel like that should di- dictate it. But right now I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna probably say Forest State right now. All right, I don't. I just got one more question. I don't know if you've seen this. This was a picture of, and Adam's gonna pull up the picture now. This kid supposedly is playing in a 12U league. Do you think – how old do you think this guy really is? I've seen it. 12? 12, <laughs> 12 years. That's what it says on the trophy, 12 you. Bro, he look about 30 right yeah. now. <laughs> like, what? Like, the mustache, kid. the tattoo, the arm tattoo is what throws me off. 12? Oh, no, 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 no. They need to be first certificate. No. Mm-mm. 12 years old? No. You shouldn't even be – first of all, you shouldn't be allowed – you shouldn't be allowed to get tattoos that early, first of all. First off, like, yeah, that kid's not – yeah, they, they need to check his birth certificate. Yeah, oh, you had a full mustache. Yeah. Oh no. No, 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 no. That kid's good. He's a good 15, 16, 18, 19, 20 for sure. So you, you didn't look like this when you were twelve. Oh no, I did not. I didn't know. I didn't know that. He got, bro. He has a full beard, bro. He has a full. Oh my goodness. A full. I mean, not beard, but mustache. Oh my goodness. At twelve years old. Man, what, I don't know what they doing. What are they putting these kids milk nowadays, man? Like, that's the truth. Like, <laughs> sheesh. Big Cat, man, we appreciate you taking so much time to uh, join us, man. It was a lot of fun. I know uh, we've been trying to get this ho- hooked up for a while, man. So appreciate you being patient with us and, and hopping on here, man. Appreciate the uh, everything you did for Night Nation. You still, you'll still keep coming back and, and rocking black and gold, too. We appreciate that about you. We'll be rooting for you as you go to your next death, man. Hopefully something uh, breaks for you soon here. I know a lot of Night fans are rooting for you and cheering you on, man. So wish you the best of luck. Stay healthy. And uh, if you ever need anything from us, man, definitely reach out. We, we enjoyed having you on the show. Man, yes, sir, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Yes, sir. All right, good night. All right, good night.